Mobility for runners, session two. You don't need any equipment for this one. However, it would be useful if you had a wall or a post or something as well, just to be able to support yourself in a couple of these exercises. So just like we talked about in session one, we're gonna do the same prep across all of our mobility sessions. It's actually forward swings and your lateral leg swings. So remember forward swings, going legs straight out to the front, bend as it goes behind, trying to get as high as we can. 15 per side on those, and then your lateral swings across the body and out to the side. Again, trying to get as far out to the side as we can, keeping that leg straight. Remember to use something for support, such as a post or a wall, because we're not bothered about balance, we're focused on range of motion, trying to get as much as we can. So if you have that support, it's gonna promote you being able to get slightly higher with the leg in each of those directions. So 15 per side on the forward leg swings, 15 per side on the lateral leg swings, just the one round on that. Then from there, we're gonna go into our hip hinge to start with. So mobilizing through the hamstrings and also just drilling that correct hip hinge position, which is really useful for our deadlifts or any other sort of posterior chain exercise, which are all vital for runners and you'll see plenty in the program that we do. So for these, remember we want that hip width stance, so quite narrow. We're then gonna unlock the knees and we're gonna drive the hips backwards. What I want you to do though as well is place your palms, your hands on your thighs, so facing towards the thighs, and you're gonna use that to really focus on pushing the hips back out of the way as you slide the hands down the thighs and ideally get the wrists just below the kneecaps. So you can see, I've just got a slight bend on the legs, back's nice and straight, hands are just below the knees, and then I come back to standing, squeeze the glutes. If you're really tight through your hamstrings, then just don't go as low down the body with the hands. Just kind of stop just sort of middle of the knees or just above, depending on that range of motion. But the movement is still the same. The hips still go back. We close this angle here and that back stays nice and straight so we don't slouch through the shoulders. If you want to as well, you can use a wall or something like a door as a reference to try and reach the hips towards to find that you're making sure the hips are going backwards. So just find that position where you can just touch the bum to that, uh, that post. Again, like I said, especially if you are mobile, getting those hands just below the knees. And if you feel the hips touching that post behind you, chances are you're doing the right movement, okay? Remember, it's all about feeling that stretch through the hamstrings and the glutes. If you don't feel it there, then chances are you're just rounding through your upper back and your lower back and not doing it correctly, unless you're super mobile in your hamstrings, i.e. you can easily get sort of palms down to the floor, something like that. You may not feel the stretch as much in the hamstrings. If in doubt, obviously film yourself from the side and just look at your back angle. So you're gonna do 15 reps on that, then rest for 20 to 30 seconds, and then do another 15 reps. So two rounds on that. Then from there, we're gonna go into the world's greatest stretch. So this one is combining a little bit of hip stretching and hamstring stretching at the same time. So it's all based around the lunge. So we're gonna take a big step forwards. We're gonna drop that back knee to the floor and then put the hands to the ground. From there, you're then gonna focus on lifting the back knee off the floor and pushing the hips back. So you're trying to straighten out this front leg and allow the toes to come off the floor, but keep your hands on the floor as you do. Then drop the, both, uh, the knee back to the floor, stand out of it and switch legs. So step down to the ground, hands to the floor, lift the back knee, push the hips back, try and straighten out the front leg, hold for a second in each, and then reset, okay? So trying to focus on stretching out those hamstrings, don't force it, so if you can't fully lock out that leg as you push the hips back, that's fine, just feel a mild stretch in the hamstrings. So when we're here, we're not really trying to force this to be locked out, unless you're mobile enough to do so, I'm not too bad. But like I said, if you really feel that tightness, it may be that you just literally do that, and that's absolutely fine, so you've still got a bit of a bend. As long as you feel a stretch through the hamstring, then you're on the right track. Like I said, the key is make sure you relax out of it first before changing those legs. You're gonna alternate sides, and you're gonna go for five per side on that. Again, you're gonna rest for 20 to 30 seconds, and you're gonna do that for a second set. So two rounds of five per side on the world's greatest stretch. Then from there, we're gonna go into some 90-90 rolls. So for this one, we're looking at that hip internal and external rotation. So we want one knee coming straight out to the front of the torso with a 90 degree bend on the leg. The other knee goes out to the side of the torso, again with that 90 degree bend on the leg. So that's your start position. Now, you may find it's easy to get into that. If so, try and keep the torso as upright as you can. So without any support of the hand. If not, put a hand or two hands down behind you just to give you a bit of support so it's not super intense, okay? From there, ideally then we're gonna go into some rolls. So once we're in this position, 
We're then gonna lift both knees up towards the ceiling. And as we do that, we're gonna flip them over, roll from one hip to the other, and now reverse those legs. So now this one's coming out the front of the torso, this one's coming out the side of the torso. So like I said, ideally keeping the torso as upright as we can without support from the hands. However, if that's too much, place the hands behind you, but nice and close to the hips, so you keep the torso as upright as you can. Because if you lean back too much, it's then gonna take away from the stretch we're actually trying to get through these hips. So try and fingertip push through the floor, keep the torso as upright as you can, so you still get a good stretch through those hips as you rotate forward and back, okay? So you're gonna rotate through, and you're gonna go for 10 per side. So you're gonna go for 20 reps all together. You're then gonna rest for 20 to 30 seconds, and again, do two rounds on that one. Next from there, we're gonna go into some half kneeling rotations. So looking at our thoracic spine mobility now. So again, come into that tall kneeling stance. So on the knees, torso nice and upright to start with. We're then gonna take one leg and push it out to the side. So my hips are now pointing towards the camera straight ahead. I'm then gonna take one knee and one foot and bring it out to the side. So if mine pointing forwards like this, that leg is now 90 degrees to my side pointing away out to this direction here. So knee and toe are pointing in that same position. If that's too much, you can't get that position because of mobility, then just bring the foot a bit closer back towards the middle to find that position where you can hold that without too much of an intense stretch. But ideally, like I said, try and get that hip open as much as we can. The knee should be above the ankle. And then all we're gonna do is drop the other hand to the floor, like this, reach under the body, and reach to the sky. Make sure all that rotation comes from our upper back and while we're doing that, this knee doesn't cave inwards and stays above the ankle. So nice big rotations, all from the upper back. And you're gonna go for 15 per side on those. Again, 20 to 30 second rest, and then another round. So two rounds of 15 per side on that. So the last piece you're gonna finish up with now, again, is a static stretch for the quads and the hip flexors. So for this one, I know I said you don't need any equipment, but if you've got a mat or anything or a cushion, you may find that helps with the knee, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to. So for this one now, ideally what you want to do is set up that mat so it's just in front of a wall. So if I drop into a lunge now with my back knee on the mat, I've got a little bit of space in front of the wall, in front of my foot, okay? From there then, what I'm gonna do is grab the foot of my back leg, pulling the heel towards the bum, using the other hand to support against the wall, so palm flat against the wall or post or door frame, and then gonna lean my whole body in towards that wall or post. So I'm not grabbing it, I'm just gently leaning, moving the whole body forward so you can see, I've still got a nice straight torso, I'm not arching my lower back like this, I'm just leaning my whole body until I feel a good stretch through that quad and that hip of the back leg. And we're just gonna hold that for 10 breaths on one side, and then 10 breaths on the other. So remember, in through the nose, out through the mouth, nice relaxed breathing for 10 breaths on each side. Once you've done that, have a breather, just the one round in between. And that's a mobility session.